I'm quite a fan of trading price breakouts, which jump onto trends in one direction or another. However, quite often these breakouts actually fail, and they become failed breakouts or false breakouts, and you'll end up losing money on that trade. So in this video, I'm going to show you an effective way to actually make money from those failed or those false breakouts. The strategy only takes one hour a day to trade, so that's really useful for those of you who are limited on time, which you can spend trading. And the entries are really simple using the previous day's high and low, and the exits are even simpler. So I'm going to show you the entry and the exit rules on the chart, and then I'm going to walk you through some more steps which we approve upon the basic strategy or the basic idea. So here's our chart of Euro Pound, and it's a 15 minute chart as I just mentioned. If we look between these vertical dotted lines, these are our session breaks which are at 1659 or 1700. So what we're looking at here from here through to here is 24 hours worth of data or you know, a day's worth of data with Forex. To enter trades we're looking at the breakout levels of the daily high and low of the previous day. You can see we've entered short here so we entered short because we were looking at the highs and lows of the previous day. So looking at this previous day's action, you could also look at a daily chart, we want to identify the high and the low. We can see that the low point was this bar here, and the horizontal white line shows the low point, and the high point of that day was this bar here, so the high was here. Once we've identified the high and the low, what we're looking at is we're working within a time window, and I'll talk a bit more about the time window as we go through the optimizations. But in this example, we're looking at a time window between 6 a.m. and 7 a.m., so just one hour. And what we're looking for is a false breakout. We've got a short trade here. So to enter a short trade, what we're looking for is a close to come back below the high of the previous day. So what I mean by that is we've identified the high point, which is about here. And if we move into the next day, we can see prices have gone above it. And then they've also, they've actually closed back below it down here. However, this wasn't within our time window. This wasn't between 6 and 7 a.m. But then prices carried on up. They came down. And then eventually they closed at 6.15. There was a close back below the high of yesterday's bar. And because it closed below, so it had gone up, it had broken out, it had closed back below it, and we're within our time window, then we literally, we go short on the open of the next bar. And the same would be true, or the opposite would be true for a long trade. What we'd look for is we'd look at the low level of yesterday, and we'd look for prices to come down and break down below it, but then close back above that level within our time window. So in this case, it would be between 6 and 7 a.m. Here's a long trade example for you. So this was yesterday's price action. And looking at the low, we can see the lowest bar was about here. So then the next day, what we're looking for is prices to break below that low, which they did on this bar here. They broke below and they stayed below until within our time window, which was from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., we were looking for a close back above that low, and that occurred on this bar here, on the 6.15 bar. So we went long on the next bar. So if we have the lowest price of yesterday, we're looking for prices to break down below that, then close back above it, and that's our reversal, and that's to go long, and the opposite was for short trades. And we're looking at another long trade, just so I can show you the exit. So here's our entry. Looks like we've broken down below yesterday's lows and closed back above it within the time window. And our exit is simply first profitable close. So or we're actually using a specific time rather than the end of the session. I've pulled it back a bit and I've said at 16.45, which is only about 15 minutes before the end of the session, at 16.45, if we're in profit for the trade, then just close out the trade. If we're not in profit, then leave the trade open. However, I've also introduced a what I call a day delay. 
and at the moment it's set to one day. That means that we have to be in the trade a minimum of 24 hours before we close out. So looking at this trade here, we went long here and at the end of the day we had a tiny bit of profit but because we hadn't been in the trade for 24 hours or more we didn't exit. But on the 16.45 on the next day because we had been in the trade over 24 hours then we exited. Okay so it's a simple timed exit combined with are we in profit or are we not in profit. So currently on this workspace the inputs that I have for the strategy are completely just made up. So we've got our window start time that's when that hour starts. We've got a window duration now this is 100, so that would mean that the window is between 600 and 700 hours, so 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. I'm going to try and change this later on to 2 hours, 3 hours, 4 hours to see what's best. The days in the trade, that's that delay before we look at the first profitable close. I mentioned at the moment we have to be in the trade a minimum of one day before we exit. The exit time is at 16.45. Ignore the look back for now, we will look at a stop loss later on. So let's just see how that performs. And it's moving in the right direction, it's going up, so quite happy with that. Um, like I say, the 6am was purely just a guess, but let's run an optimization to see which starting time is the best. So remember we're still using a, a one hour duration. If we look on this column here, we've got zero, so that's midnight to 1am and we're looking at the results of the net profit. If we look down the net profit, you can quickly see that the most net profit was made from 5 a.m., so it's 5 a.m. to 6 a.m., so that one hour. And we're also making a very good average trade. This area is quite stable as well. 4 a.m., 5, 6, 7, they're all pretty good numbers. So 5 a.m. seems like an obvious choice. So let's select that and see what that looks like. There's the equity curve, and it's even better than before. We've got an average trade, we already know, of £160. That's certainly good enough. We haven't got any trading costs added in this test, but even after costs, £160 is still good enough to be making some profit. The next thing I want to look at is the trade duration. At the moment, remember it's 100 or 1 hour. But what if a duration of 2 hours, 3 hours, 4 hours might be better? So I'll run a test on that and I run a test from one hour through to five hours. Remember, we're still starting at 5 a.m. And quite clearly, we can see straight away that trading just with that one hour is best. It's got the best net profit, it's got the best average trade, and it's got the highest percent profitable of 84% winners. We are taking the least amount of trades because we're narrowing our time window, but I'm happy to keep it at the hour for now. The next test I want to look at is that day delay before we exit. Remember at the moment we're holding trades from, for a minimum of one day before we start looking at the end of each day whether we're in profit or not. So I optimise that day delay and I've actually called it days in trade in this study. Currently we're using one, as you recognise, on the average trade of 160, 41,000 pounds. What about if there's a better one? So straight away we can see holding for two days before we consider exiting is better. We've got more net profit, we've got a higher average trade. As we move down and hold even longer, we can see that the best results are probably five. We've got a slightly higher average trade. Profit, net profit is almost identical, but I would prefer to hold for just the two days. It means we're making similar money, but we're holding for a less amount of time, so the trade is more efficient. And we've also got a higher win rate, so I'm gonna use two days. So let's select that and see how that looks. Remember our average trade has gone up from 160 pounds to 214, so that's good equity curve is really nice still, so that's really good news too. We've still got a couple more optimizations to do, including finding a decent stop loss. But before we do that, if you're enjoying the video already and you're finding it useful, then 
please hit the thumbs up button now. In this next workspace, we're looking at the stop loss. So I've optimized, try to find the best stop loss, between, and I've gone between 0 and 400 pips here down the bottom. And quite quickly, we can see comparing to no stop loss, net profit 52,000, using a stop loss has really killed the performance of this strategy. Uh, we're using just a fixed pip stop loss, and maybe if I was to carry on with this development, I would look at other types of stop loss. Fixed pip generally does work very well, but we can see here that this stop loss really has hindered this strategy. Looking at the average trade, from no stop loss, £214. The minute we start using a stop loss, even something like 150 pips has drastically impacted our profit. So that's a real shame. We come down towards a 400 pip stop loss. You can see that it does get better, but we're still only making 40, 41,000 net profit as opposed to 52 with no stop loss. Now, looking at the net profit coming down, I see 33,000 here, 34,000, and then as the stop loss gets larger than 180, we don't seem to be making much more net profit very quickly. And 180 has around about the best net profit for keeping the stop loss as small as we can, really. So I'm happy to try 180 pips, keeping it as small as we can, but sacrificing the least amount of profit. Now we've selected that. There's the equity curve. And yeah, it's, it's killed the equity curve as well. However, what is good news is from sort of this period here, 2013 onwards, the curve is still pretty nice. These early years aren't so great, but we do need to use a stop loss. So for now, I am gonna continue and use that 180 pip stop loss. If we had a really nice curve like this early on, and then this later part here, which is a bit choppy, was most recent, then I'd probably forget about it and look immediately to look for a new type of stop loss. But because the last five years or so have been pretty good, I'm happy to leave it for now. And the last test that I want to do is look at that exit time where we check to see at the end of the day if we're in profit or loss, whether we need to exit or not. At the moment, like I mentioned, I wanted it just to be at the end of the trading session. Well, I've actually got it 15 minutes before. I've got it at 16.45, but is there a better time? So let's have a look at that. And here's the optimization. I've got an input called my exit time at the moment, where I've got 16.45. And looking at the numbers as usual, uh, net profit, the best and the best average trade is actually at 18.45. However, something I do want you to notice is, look how stable these are. It, there isn't any massive differences between the, the times that we actually exit or we look at exiting. And if we look at around about, let's say 4.45, net profit still at 30,000, average trade 117,000 pounds. So what that means is if you're gonna be trading a strategy like this, manually, so you're not using automated software like I do, then we're already looking for entries to the trade between 5 and 6 a.m. And looking at these results, it goes to show that you can actually look for the exits at around 5 a.m. too, and it won't hinder the performance too much. If you were looking for the optimal performance or trading it automatically, or you could be in front of the charts at 18.45, then I'd suggest 18.45 but it doesn't really make a massive difference uh, what time you actually look for that exit. So let's select 1845 and have a look at the equity curve. And the equity curve looks fairly similar to what it did do, as expected really, from looking at the results. And the last thing I want to do is have a look at the out of sample data. So in this chart, We've got data from 2008, and we've got it up until the 27th of August, 2021. So we've got over two and a half years worth of unseen data. And there's the equity curve. Now, notice that we are making new highs, especially recently. We did go through a bit of a drawdown period. Uh, our old data, 
it was up until about about this high here and then we immediately went into drawdown 2019 wasn't a particularly good year but then 2020 2021 we've more than made up for that drawdown period and we're making new highs so that's something that we do obviously want to see so there you have an idea of a way to trade those false or failed breakouts as usual I won't be trading this strategy immediately I'll keep an eye on it I'll come back to it in a few months time look at the performance report again make sure that we're making new highs or the perform I'm happy with the performance then I'll consider using it within my own trading portfolio of strategies. I really enjoy making these videos because most of the time it's just documenting what I'm doing. It's documenting me developing new strategies for my own trading. However, maybe you don't always want to see what I'm doing. Maybe you've got some specific ideas that you'd like me to make videos around. If there are, leave them in the comments below and if enough of you ask about similar topics then I'll make some new videos around exactly what you want to see. But until then, until the next video, this is Jared Goodwin and thank you.